Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Praise Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy New Year. I know some of y'all may be sleeping. Let's see who's up. Rise and shine and give God the glory. Let's see who's awake. <laughs> Amen. Happy Happy New Year, everybody that's getting on. Happy New Year. Happy and blessed 2023. Happy New Year to you all. Amen. Rise and shine. I know some people are asleep. Amen. But let's get up and give God praise today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I see some hearts coming through, a light coming through. Amen. Praise God. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to our Sunday morning live service with yours truly. God bless you, Dorothy Baptiste. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, my brother and friend, Norman Bells. Happy New Year to you, sir. I pray that everyone has a blessed year of 2023 in Jesus' name. Yes, happy Sunday. Amen. 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 Pray that everybody's doing well. Pray that we think we're grateful to be in another year that wasn't promised to us. And uh, we just thank God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Amen. I went out early to run some errands. That's, it seems like everybody's moving a little snow, slow today. I said, oh, it's, it is a holiday. But we're yet here. We give God praise. Happy New Year. Amen. Thank you. My sister Dorothy, God bless you. So we just bless the Lord this morning. We give God praise, glory, and honor for this new day, new Sunday, new year. In Jesus' name, amen. Rise and shine and give God the glory. Hallelujah. We get on, we're here every Sunday morning at 7.55 a.m. From 7.55 a.m. to 8.05 is our meet and greet. And then 8.05, we begin prayer. So we bless the Lord this morning. Glad you're on, Brother Norman. I don't know where my peeps at today in that bed. Rise and shine and wake up and give God the glory. Amen. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday to you. God bless you. Gifted Bryn Gordon. Happy New Year to you. I pray that everyone that's getting on will have a blessed 2023 in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we just say praise God to everybody. We thank God for this day, another day, another year. We thank God for all of his goodness, his mercy, and his grace that he brought us over. He brought us over. God bless you, Jill. Happy New Year to you. Amen. Good to see you last night. We had an amazing service last night. It was so good. And we give God praise and glory for our service. We meet every Saturday night at 6 p.m. at 69 Myrtle Street, Cranford, New Jersey, at Calvary Tabernacle, also known as the Harvest Training Center. So we give God praise for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Amen. So we say happy Sunday to everybody in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We give God praise. We give him glory. We give him honor. Yes. God bless you. Uh, happy New Year uh, to everyone that's getting on. Happy New Year, Barbara. I see you. Happy New Year, Barbara. We made it over in Jesus' name. We made it over. Amen. I'm going to share a brief word with you that I shared on last night, so I pray that it blesses you. Amen. Happy New Year, Suzanne. God bless your heart. Happy New Year. Happy and blessed New Year to everybody in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to share a word with you this morning. I shared the same word last night, so we're going to share a word with you today. And I pray that it blesses you and encourages you in Jesus' name. Yes, Barbara, happy new year and good morning. Amen. People slow rising, but we give God praise. I've been up early this morning. I had some things to do, so I wanted to get an early start. So I've been up since about since about uh, 3.30 this morning. I've been up <laughs> getting stuff done and getting stuff accomplished. Sister First Lady Doris Taylor, Happy New Year to you, my dear. I pray that all is well, praying for you and the family in Jesus' name. Let Edward know we're praying for him as well. Happy New Year, Pastor Faye. 
Amen. Pastor Faye's giving us a shout out all the way from North Carolina. Sister Gwen, happy Sunday to you. Happy New Year. It was good to see you out last night giving God praise. We had an awesome time last night in service. Praise and worship was phenomenal and everything was so good. Amen. So we thank and praise God for our service last night and for this morning's service. And we're just going to give God praise for all that he's done for us. And we made it over. Somebody type, who can be the first one to type in the word over? We made it over into 2023. A lot of people didn't make it, but we made it. And we're grateful this morning that we made it over in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Thank the Lord for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. That's right, Jill, over. That's right, Barbara, over. That's right, Doris Taylor, over. That's right, Gifted Brand Gordon, over. We made it over. Bless the Lord. <laughs> I should have said over and through. We made it over some over into 2023 and through a lot of stuff last year. But we thank God for a new, new year. So I pray that this word blesses you and encourages you this morning in Jesus' name. That's right, Sister Gwen, over. That's right, uh, Dorothy, over. We made it over. And we made it over for a reason and we made it over for a purpose. That's right, Suzanne, over and through, over and through. That's right, Pastor Faith, over. Amen. Over, over, over. So we give God praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Nice outside today. Sun is shining. It's a little warmer today. As I said, I've been up since about three, after three this morning. I had some things I had to get done. It was like either get up and get up early or let your day start later. So I said, no, let me get up about, I got about 3.30 and Got some stuff done and accomplished so I can spend some me time for myself today and in a couple of days. Pastor Bev, happy Sunday. We had such an awesome night last night in the presence of the Lord. It was a phenomenal service. Uh, it was really, really good. So we give God praise. Amen. Good morning, my sister Cheryl Butler Draper. Happy New Year, my sister. Love you much. Happy New Year to you, to Deke to your son, to your grandbaby, to the whole family in Jesus' name. Happy and blessed new year to everybody in Jesus' name. Amen. Naira Carter, happy and blessed Sunday. She's coming in live from work, so we ask that you bless Naira, cover her, keep her, and strengthen her. Bless those that are in the hospital, Lord. Bring healing and wholeness to their bodies and bring them through in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us through to another year. Amen. It's 8.01. We will start prayer at 8.05. And I'm going to share a, a word with you today and let you go and enjoy this New Year's Day as I plan on doing the same thing. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. So we give God praise. Let's fill this news feed up with hearts this morning. Let me see some hearts for the Lord, hearts of praise and hearts of adoration this morning in Jesus' name. Pastor Bev says, yes, awesome service last night. The presence of the Lord was in the room. And to God be the glory. Yes, 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 to God be the glory. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. So we're going to uh, begin prayer in a few minutes. It's 802. We're going to begin prayer at 805 a.m. That's right. Fill this news feed up with hearts. Giving God praise. Happy New Year, my sister Dora Young. Also calling, also shouting out from Carolina as well. Amen. Amen. That's right. Fill this news feed up with hearts. We give God hearts of praise and adoration this morning in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We give him our hearts of love and praise. Amen. Bonnie Jackson, good morning. Happy New Year, Bonnie. Happy New Year. Love you. Blessings to you. Tell Grandma I said Happy New Year. I got to call her and hear her voice. I haven't talked to her in a minute. Happy New Year, Von A. And to the family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, two minutes. Praise the Lord. I see some people slow getting on, but they'll get on. If they don't get on now, they can get on and listen later. Some people still in the sleeping ministry. <laughs> Amen. But we praise God for this day. We thank God for another year. And I just believe God is going to do great things in all of our lives this year. In spite of what we go through, God is still good. And yes. Oh, she's in. Oh, you're in Georgia. OK, good. Dora Young is in Georgia. Praise God. So we have people watching all around the world. In Jesus name. All right. One more minute and we're going to begin prayer. 
I'm going to release my word and let y'all go have some breakfast. I was trying to buy breakfast this morning for me and Damien, but everything, McDonald's was closed. I thought I was going to have some pancakes and sausage, but they said it'd be about an hour or so. I said, well, we're going to do something different. Yes, I sure will. We'll keep Second Baptist in prayer on that pastoral search that God will give them a pastor after his own heart that God will send the right person to Second Baptist, Lord, the right leader to take that church to the next dimension in Jesus name. That's what we got to do. We got to pray, 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 pray. Prayer will get us in. Prayer will get us out and prayer will get us through in Jesus name. Yes. Second Baptist Church Broadway has a lot of good history. A lot of good people have come through there and that's a it's a good house. Amen. They do, uh, Jill. That's what I was trying to get this morning. They were still closed. So, all right, it's 8.05. Good morning, Sonia Roundtree. Happy birthday to you in January 24th. You'll be big 51, Sonia. Getting old. Getting old. Okay, it's prayer time. It's 8.05 in the worshiping sanctuary. God bless you, Luann. I'm glad you're finally able to watch. Happy and blessed uh, New Year's. I believe Luann is still in Pennsylvania, so we give God praise. Yes, Barbara, we're going to pray for one another. So let's pray now. Father, we bless you. We thank you. God bless you, Donna. Father, we bless you for this day. We thank you that this is the day that you have made, and we come this morning to rejoice and to be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for allowing us all to enter into 2023, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father God, we, we've been through so much in 2022 and 2021 and 2020, but Lord, we thank you that we're still here in the land of the living. So Father, we ask that you would have your way in our lives today, Lord, that you would use us all for your glory in the name of Jesus. And Father, even as your word goes forth today, we pray that this word will encourage us, it will strengthen us, it will help us to navigate through this year in Jesus' name, that even Though we may go through different trials and challenges, Lord, that you're the God who's always with us, that you never leave us nor forsake us. So we come this morning with hearts of praise, hearts of gratitude, hearts of adoration for bringing us to this year, Father God. And let us be about your business this year. Let us be about our Father's business and do what it is that you've placed us here on earth to do for such a time as this. So, Father, we honor you. We worship you. We give you the praise today, Father God. We say, Lord, have your way. This morning, as the word of God comes forth, anoint my lips to speak what you would have me to say and cause us all to be doers of your word and not just hearers. Father, I pray for those that may be sick in their bodies this morning. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the great physician, that you are the Lord who heals us, Father God. So we thank you, Lord, that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you and by your stripes. We are healed. Father, we release supernatural healing to flow through these airways, Father God. Let those that are sick in their body be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, someone may be low in their spirit today. They may be down, Father God. I thank you that you're the glory and lifter of their heads today, Lord, in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we ask that you would have your way this morning, that you would speak to us individually as well as corporately, and we thank you for bringing us into this new year in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. If you agree with that prayer, say amen. God bless you, Brother Mark Hamlin. Good morning and happy new year. God bless you, Brother Thomas Smith. Good morning and happy new year. Uh, Pastor Bear put Psalm 65, 11, you crown the year 2023 with your goodness and your past drip with abundance. Amen. We received that. That's Psalm 65, 11. Read that. Happy new year, uh, Minister Steph. Yes. Happy new year, uh, Sonia, Vane, Luann, amen. Everybody saying amen. Yes, we thank God for the power of prayer. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. So I don't want to keep you all too long, even though I know that y'all not rushing me, but I want to uh, release this word to you this morning. To those of you that were out last night, it's the same word, but uh, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I just want to encourage you with this uh word this morning that we can be mindful and a lot of these things we know but we just want to be put in remembrance so i want to give you five things to remember in 2023 amen prophetess pisana boulder thank you jesus for another day another season of overflow and spirit and blessings in my life so that i can reach for someone with your love amen that's a good prayer kiki amen we love you and we say happy new year to everybody Amen. So I want to just give you these words of encouragement. I want to give you five things to remember in 2023. 
five things to remember in 2023. It's not so much uh, that we're in a new year that makes things new for us. We have to we have to become new and we have to shift and we have to have a new mindset. You can have a new year, but have a same old negative mindset and nothing will change. Nothing will happen. The only thing that will happen is that the dates have changed. I can't get no good. Amen. The dates. No, we, we want more than the dates to change. We want to change. Amen. I'm going to let that settle in. We want more than the dates to change. We have come from December 31st, 2022 into January 1, 2023. So it's a new year. And I don't want us to uh, enjoy the first five days, seven days a week. And then we fall back into like a rut or a slump uh, from 2022. No, you have to realize that God has blessed us with life. And that we're here for such a time as this, no matter what you've experienced, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you may be even going through now, God has spared your life and God has caused you to come into this new year for such a time as this. Let me take a sip to that. Amen. We can say happy new year. We can do all that, but it's not so much that we're in a new year. You got to be new. You have to change. You have to change. You have to shift. Your mind has to shift. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So I want to shake you as one of my friends said, I want to shake and rattle your cage today. I want to shake you to know that you made it. Somebody type in, I made it. In spite of everything you've been through, I want you to type in, I made it. I want you to know that, that you made it. No matter what the odds were, no matter how sad you were, no matter what you've been through, no matter who hurt you, no matter who left you, no matter who died, you made it. And I, I want you to know that in your spirit that you made it. That's right, Jim. You made it through the ups, through the downs, through the ins, through the outs, through the adversity. You made it. You got to know that you made it and you didn't make it just to make it. You made it for a reason. You made it for a purpose and you're here for such a time as this. Our slogan for the year is, I'm not going to teach on it today, but our slogan for the year for the ministry is go mad, go mad, go M-A-D. And the acronyms for mad is go make a difference. Who can be the first one to type in go make a difference? I'm not going to teach on that today, but you will be hearing it uh, during the course of this month and throughout this year. Go mad. My challenge to you today, the body of Christ, is that you go mad. Go make a difference in someone's life. God has put you on earth to make a difference in somebody's life. Whether it's a small difference, whether you make a difference in one person's life, whether you make a, pers a, a, a difference in a city, a state, a country, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers. God put you here to make a difference. Amen. You wonder why your fight is so hard. Your fight is so hard because God put you here to make a difference. And he wants you to make a difference in the earth. That's why you survived the cancer. That's why you survived the sickness. That's why you survived the death. That's why you survived. You survived to make a difference. Now, Ricardo says, go make a difference. Okay, love this. You have to make a difference. All of us can make a difference. When I get up out of my bed on a Sunday morning, when I would want to sleep, I'm on here, not just to do church, not just to teach and preach, but to make a difference in your life. Everybody that's on this line is called to make a difference. You're called to, to, to bring change to somebody. You're called to bring deliverance to somebody. You're called to help somebody. You're called to encourage somebody. You're called to snatch somebody out of the pits of hell. You're called to speak life into someone's life. You are called to go mad. Go make a difference. Let's give God praise. Amen. So that's our slogan for the year. Go mad. Go make a difference. Now, I'm not going to teach on that today, but you're going to be hearing me talk about that. But I wanted to put that word in your spirit that you survived the things that you survived and you're going, you came out of the things you came out of that you can make a difference in someone else's life through the hurts, through the pains, through the disappointments, through the loss, through the betrayal, through the rejection, whatever you've experienced, God has called you and anointed you for such a time as this to make a difference in the earth 
to make a difference in your city, to make a difference on any platform that he gives you. He's called you to make a difference. Somebody needs to hear your story. Somebody needs to know where you've come from. Someone needs to know that if you made it, they can make it. Amen. So God didn't bring you out so you could be by yourself. He brought you out that you could bring others out and that you could make a difference in the earth. Let's give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so that's just my introduction, but I want you to keep that in your spirit. Go mad. I'm going, Lord, I thank you for life. I thank you for health. I thank you for strength. I thank you that you brought me out. Even when I was depressed, you brought me out. And Lord, I'm going to make a difference in someone else's life. Amen. So that's our theme for the year. Go mad. Go make a difference. Amen. Don't just take what God has done for you and keep it to yourself. That's very selfish. Make a difference. If you see someone that's sad, you see someone whose spirit is low, you see some that, someone that you can help, someone you can talk to, someone that you can that you can sit and listen to, take their hand, hold their hand, pray for them, love them, encourage them, take them out to eat, whatever, whatever it means. God left you here to make a difference. Amen. Glory to God. He left you here to make a difference. Whatever that difference is, everybody has a different call. Everybody has a different anointing. Everybody has a different gift. Everybody's not called to do what I do, but you're all called to make a difference in the earth. Amen. All right. So I want to give you five things to remember in 2023. These five things are going to help you make a difference. These five things, if you take them into your life, take them into your heart, they're going to empower you and strengthen you and help you to make a difference. Five things to remember in 2023. Number one, let's go. Number one is forget and leave the past in the past. Forget and leave the past in the past. And our scripture reference is Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Paul says here, no dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Somebody who could be the first one to, to type in the number one. Uh, y'all, y'all are typing this morning. I want to see who can be the first person to type in the number one. All my students, all my uh, 2023 students in class today, who can be the first? There it is, Luann. Who can be who type in number one? There we go. Uh, Paul says here, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not received, achieved it. But I focus on this one thing. I want you all to focus on this one thing that I'm going to tell you this morning, according to Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Forget those things which are behind. Amen. For, uh, this one thing, forgetting the past, forgetting the past and moving forward to what lies ahead. Paul says here, but I focus on this one thing, one thing. Forgetting the past. You have to leave the past in the past. You have to leave 2023, I'm sorry, 2022, 2021, 2020, 1990. You got to leave all that stuff in the past. You cannot successfully move forward if you stay stuck in the past. We all have past hurts, past pain, past drama past stuff, but you have to move past it in order to bring someone else out. Amen. You can't stay stuck in unforgiveness. You can't stay stuck in fear. You can't stay stuck on who left you. You can't stay stuck on who disappointed you. You can't stay stuck on who uh, talked about you. You can't say you got to move forward. What God has in store for you is so much bigger and greater than you staying stuck on the past. Amen. Philippians 3, 13 and 14, it says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. Paul said, I have not achieved it, achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. That's right, Barbara Roundtree, time to move on. That's what I preached, been preaching on. We have to move on once and for all. You got to move on. Glory to God. Forget this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, forgetting the past. Forgetting what you lost, forgetting who left you, forgetting all that and moving forward. And I know it's challenging. I'm not saying forget your loved ones or act like they never existed. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying if there's a portion that's keeping you in mourning or keeping you down or keeping you crippled or keeping you where you can't advance, you got to say, God, you got to grace me and help me to move forward and to leave the past in the past, past pains, past hurts 
Pastor Supportment, Lord, help me and grace me to leave the past in the past so I can launch into my future into all that you have in store for me. Amen. Glory to God. You cannot move forward looking and holding backwards. Amen. You can't drive a car forward looking in your rearview mirror. No, you got to move forward. You have to take the things that have hurt you and take the things that have disappointed you and use them as stepping stones. Somebody type in stepping stone. You have to use the things that have come to cripple you and come to bring you down and use them as stepping stones that you can step over the enemy, that you can step over the people that have tried to keep you down and say, you know what, what the enemy meant for evil, I'm going to use it for God's glory. Amen. I'm going to use my hurts and pains and I'm going to let, I'm going to help pull somebody else out. Yes. I'm going to pull, I'm going to help somebody else. Amen. It, it, when you were down, say, you know what? I'm not going to say that. I'm going to pull somebody up. Use them as stepping stones. Yes. Glory to God. You cannot have a test without a testimony. You can't have a testimony without going through a test. And we've all been through tests. We've all been through challenges, but you have to choose to forgive. You have to choose to move on. You have to, you have to choose to forgive so you can move forward. Amen. Let me say it again. You have to choose to forgive so you can move forward. And let me tell you something. Don't even wait for the person to ask you to forgive them. You say, you know what? You call their name out. And you say, you know what? I forgive you for what you said, for what you did, for whatever, because you love yourself enough that you got to move forward. Amen. The Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Even if somebody did you dirty, you say, you know what? I'm going to be the bigger person and I'm going to forgive you because you know what? As long as you hold unforgiveness, that person holds power over you. It could be a family member. It could be a co-worker. It could be whatever. But I'm telling you, don't give anybody your power. Glory to God. Because let me tell you something. Them people that moved on, they ain't even thinking about you no more. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right, all right. So number one is forget and leave the past in the past. Scripture references Philippians 3, 13 and 14. I'm gonna read it one more time because you need to hear it. It says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. What is the one thing? Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Father, I pray this morning that your people will move forward into what lies ahead for them, Father God. That where there's been past hurts and pains and disappointment, let them look forward to what lies ahead. Where there's been disappointment, Lord, shift their minds this morning and shift their hearts this morning and shift their thinking into expectation, Lord, that they will expect you to do great and mighty things in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. And my second scripture reference for number one is Philipp is Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. It says, but forget all that. Forget all what? Forget all that stuff that happened. Forget all that stuff that happened in the past. Forget all that disappointment. I'm telling you, it's a new day and it's a new year. Just because we're in a new year, I'm telling you, if you don't, if you don't take your mind out of 2022, 2021, 2020, the same thing will take place. You gotta, you gotta choose to let that stuff go so you can live and enjoy 2023, whatever that looks like for you, whatever that looks like to everybody up here. Amen. You have to choose to do it. You have to love yourself enough to say, you know what? I'm letting all that garbage go. God bless you. Happy New Year, LBS more. Amen. You have to choose to let that stuff go. Cut it off. Last night, um, we did something, and you can do it at home. Last night, um, what was it? What was it? Um, I saw something on the news last week, and it was, they were doing it in New York. It was called Good Riddance Day. And so what they did for Good Riddance Day was they um, they were in somewhere in New York, in Manhattan, I believe, and they had a shredder there. It was a big shredder. And so people were coming down, writing things on paper that they wanted to release in 2022, maybe things that, that happened that they didn't like or whatever, but they were coming down and shredding it. They were writing down what happened in 2022, and they were taking it through the shredder. So they called it Good Riddance Day. So last night in service, I passed out index card. And um, I told it, and I came with a garbage bag, and I told everybody in there to write down whatever things on that piece of paper that you don't want to carry over into 2023. And I said, write it on this piece of paper, and I said, we don't have a shredder, but you're going to come to this garbage bag, and you're going to rip it up in Jesus' name. 
and I took that bag and I threw it away last night. I didn't open the bag, I ripped it up and we threw it away. So let me tell you something, if, if, if you're home today or whenever you have some time and there's some things that you don't want to carry into this year, I want you to take some time out, get you a piece of paper, get you a pen and get you some quiet time and after you give it to the Lord and you pray over it and you give it to God and you cast that care upon the Lord because he cares for you, give it to God once and for all and move on and focus on 2023. Amen. God didn't bring you here for foolishness. God didn't bring you into this new year for mess. God brought you here so he can use you and you can make a difference in the earth. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. Okay. So Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, it says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do for I'm about to do something new. Somebody type in new. I'm about to do something new. And I'm not saying new because it's a new year. God wants, God is, he's, the, he's always doing something new. God always wants to do something new and something fresh in all of our lives. That's his will for our lives. Don't stay stuck in what you don't see. Continue to believe God for new in your life. Amen. Glory to God. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, it says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to, to what I am going to do. For I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. He's already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. I'm going to read that one more time. Uh, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. It says, but forget all that. What is saying? Forget all the stuff that happened in the past. Forget all the drama. Forget all the disappointment. Forget all the arguments. Forget all the bitterness. Forget all the back and forth. Forget all that. Because what happens if you don't let that stuff go, it's going to block what God wants to do in your life. Amen. If you hold on to the past, it's going to block what God wants to do in your life. And I know sometimes it's challenging. I know sometimes it's hard when you deal with people and personalities, but you got to you gotta make up your mind. I'm not going to let nothing or nobody hinder me for what God has in store for me. Amen. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, it says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. You have to put it in your spirit. You have to know that no matter what has happened in the past, no matter what has transpired, it is nothing compared to what God is going to do for you. Amen. It says here, for I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. And then it asks the question, do you not see it? You know why you won't see what God wants to do new in your life? Holding on to the past. If you hold on to the past, you will not see what God wants to do new in your life. It will blind you. It will cause you to be foggy. Uh, few, this morning, this morning, not as bad, but yesterday when I got off of work, it was very foggy. It was a lot of fog, out, which prevents you from seeing clearly. So the enemy wants to fog your eyes and fog your mind up with stuff so you can't see and embrace the new things that God wants to do in you. It says, do you not see it? He says here, I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Amen. So I want you to stay in a spirit of expectation. Glory to God. So number one, forget and leave the past in the past. Number two, stay in expectation and faith. Stay in expectation and faith. Psalm 27, 13, David said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Not when we die, but the Lord wants to show you his goodness in the here and now. Somebody type in the here and now. God wants to show you his goodness in the here and Let me tell you something. You didn't make it in 2023 for you not to enjoy your life. I was thinking this morning as I was out driving early. Um, this year, make sure you do some things that you enjoy. Let me take a sip today. This year of 2023 make sure you do some things that you enjoy i had a kind of challenging week this week uh just some things i had to do some things i kind of dreaded doing but i did you know you do you do what you have to do we we that are movers and shakers we do what we have to do and we press past how we feel and we do what we have to do even if we have to make things happen for other people and we don't feel like doing it y'all not saying nothing so just because you love god don't always mean like you feel like doing what you want to do don't even don't always mean you feel like going to work. Y'all not saying nothing, but it's the truth. Sometimes we don't feel like going to work, but we press in and we do what we don't feel like doing. I'm teaching right now. 
Sometimes we press it and we do what we don't feel like doing. Do I have anybody, any witnesses on here? Sometimes you don't feel like going to work. Sometimes you don't feel like taking care of people. Sometimes you don't feel like being responsible and doing what you got to do. Sometimes you don't feel like doing things. But I'm telling you, do what you have to do. And when you when you uh, make it through the rough places, when you don't really feel like doing certain things that you know you got to do, reward yourself and do some things you want to do. Oh, I'm going to say it again. Do some things that you enjoy. St. John 10 and 10 says that the thief comes but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you would have life and have it more abundantly to the full till it overflows. Now, Ricardo says, you are speaking the truth, Pastor Mark. I'm telling you, sometimes we don't feel like it. <laughs> but I'm telling you, when you make it through a challenging week or you make it through a rough week or you make things happen for other people when you don't feel like making things happen for other people or you get up and you press your way to go to work when you don't feel like going to work. Let me tell you something. When you're off, do something for yourself. I can't get no good. Amen. Do something for yourself. Let me tell you something. If you die tomorrow or you die, somebody else going to enjoy your money and somebody else going to enjoy the time. And don't shortchange yourself this year. Do something for yourself. It's not being selfish, y'all. Do something that you enjoy. Do something you enjoy. Now, Ricardo said, amen to that. I'll take a sip for you. <laughs> I'm telling you, we, we go through some challenges. We go through emotional stuff. This week, I was kind of emotional. And it was just like, you know, doing things. I had obligations doing things and I really didn't want to do it, but I did it. So now I'm going to reward myself by taking some time off. That's right, Cheryl Draper, Butler Draper. Self-care is important. you got to take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, nobody's going to do it for you. And let me tell you something, no bills, those challenges, those problems, they'll be right there if God don't fix it when you come back. But I'm telling you, it's very healthy and very important that you take time for you. Take you some me time. Take you some time to rest. Do some things that you enjoy. Take yourself out to eat. Whatever it is, do what you enjoy just to reward yourself from, 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 for just going through the challenges of life. And sometimes it's not your stuff, it's other people's stuff. Y'all not saying nothing. Sometimes you got to navigate through other people's stuff. So reward yourself. Amen. All right. I pray that this blesses you because it's, it's blessing me. But I, I just felt that this morning to do some things that you enjoy. Do some new things this year. Even people that maybe believe in God for love in your life. Don't, you know, if somebody is interested in you, give them, give them the time of day. Give them some time. You know, give them the time of day. You can't say, I want somebody in my life. Or I want to do this. But then when people come to you, just say, everybody's no, no, no. No, you got to, you, you got to, you know, let your guards down a little bit. See, see where people are at. Amen. Just, just open yourself up. It's a new year. Don't, don't be so close. Open yourself up to new opportunities, new adventures for those who are looking for love, for new love, whatever, that, whatever it is. Amen. But trust God. Keep God first and keep your eyes and your ears open and stay praying. Amen. All right. Number two, I got to move on. What time is it? Oh, 832. Okay. Number two, stay in expectation and faith. Stay in expectation and faith. Uh, Cheryl Draper says a great word for a new year. We all need to clean out the old and be available for the new. That's a good word right there, Cheryl Butler Draper. My sister, that's good. I'm going to read that again. A great word for a new year. We all need to clean out the old and be available. Be available for the new. Whatever that looks like, be available for the new. Mark Hamlin says, don't cheat yourself, treat yourself. That's a good word. I love that. He says, don't cheat yourself, treat yourself. Amen. Glory to God. That's right, you all. Keep God first. Uh, what's our favorite scripture? Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything else will be added unto you. Keep God first. Amen. Number two, stay in expectation and faith. David said in Psalm 27, 13, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. I want to encourage you today to stay full of faith. Stay full of faith. Stay full of faith. Build your faith up. How does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Stay full of faith and expectation. Amen. Number three. This is really good. Keep believing for God's best in every area of your life. Keep believing for God's best. Somebody type in best 
in every area of your life. Our scripture reference is Mark 9, 23. It says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes. Glory to God. Keep believing for God's best in every area of life. Even if, it, even if you don't see no best right now, even if things don't look too good right now, as I said in earlier, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Keep believing for God's best in every area of your life. Peace. He wants you to have peace. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Uh, another passage of scripture, our joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. He wants us blessed and enjoying our life. And he wants us blessed to be a blessing. Amen. So keep believing for God's best in every area of your health, your wealth, every area of your life relationships, your children, every area of your life. God is concerned about every area of your life. Keep believing for God's best in every area and believing God for his best, even if it's peace. Sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta let some people take a back seat. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> sometimes we prefer others before we prefer ourselves. But you got to prefer yourself. You, the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Sometimes you have to say this freeing with this two letter word that will help free you. And sometimes you have to say no. Amen. If, if you're on overload, you're overloaded, you burn out. Sometimes you got to say no or not today. You have to love yourself enough to say no. They're going to make it. They ain't going to die if you say no. Amen. Sometimes you got to say no and, and recharge and rebuild yourself up. Amen. So keep believing for God's best in every area of your life. Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes. That's Mark 9, 23. Number four, never give up no matter how hard it gets. This is good right here. Listen to this. Never give up no matter how hard it gets. Even if you need help, don't be ashamed to ask for help. Don't be ashamed to ask for help. I was preparing this on Friday, and when I was writing this down, the word suicide came to me, so I put the word suicide in parentheses. Never give up, no matter how hard it gets. If you need help, don't be ashamed to ask for it. And I put the word suicide in parentheses. I put here, ask God and people to help you. We're helpers one to another. Um, and then on the next day, one of my members, her son was dating a young lady who committed suicide. She was 26 years old. The, the next day, I didn't talk to this lady. She didn't know what was on my paper. But the next day, let me tell you something. Suicide is real. We've seen people that we love, people that we watch on TV, and we see them have taken that they have taken their life. But let me tell you something. There is help out here. If you can prepare uh, your death, you can prepare your life. You can prepare to get you some help. Let me say it again. If you can prepare a suicide note, if you can prepare where you're going to die at, you can prepare to shoot yourself. The devil is a liar. You can prepare and call somebody to give you some help. God, there's help all around here. Don't be ashamed to ask for help. If you don't know who to help, get you a pass to go to police station, call the suicide hotline, go somewhere and get you some help. Amen. If you can plan your death, you can plan to live. Amen. That's a whole lot of planning. If you can plan to take your life and be very, uh, do this, step one, step two. No, that's the devil. The devil wants to take you up before your time, but the devil is a lie. If you can plan your death, you can plan to call 911 and have somebody, ask somebody to help me. Say, I'm in a low spot. Help me. Help me, help me. Help is out here. Jesus is our help, but there's other help out here for you too. God wants to help you, but God will. You can't get help if you don't ask for it. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. You have to ask for help. Don't be too proud to ask for help. If you're in a low spot, go to somebody. There is somebody that will listen to you. There is somebody that will get you the necessary help. There's people that are trained in this area to help you. Amen. And suicide, it hides. Let me say that again. Suicide hides. Look at the people that we've watched last year that died from suicide. 
They look good. They look happy. They look fulfilled. They were public figures, but they were empty on the inside. Something wasn't right. And let me tell you something. You got you got to be discerning because it could be right under your house. It could be with your children. It could be with your son, your daughter, your boyfriend, your husband. It could be right there and you'll miss it. You have to be very discerning and very prayerful and talk to people. If this, if you see them down, talk to people. Amen. Naira Carter, who works in the hospital, she said that part, don't be afraid or prideful to ask for help. If you, I thought about that. If you, God gives everybody a chance. God gives everybody a chance. I'm sure there's many people that have thought about suicide, but you press through. Amen. That's right. Uh, Cheryl Butler Draper says someone who is smiling all the time may not be the person who needs to help the most. That's right. May be the person that needs help the most. That's right, because they're hiring. We've seen many comedians that were that made us laugh, but they were hurting on the inside. Laughing on the outside, hurting on the inside. Looking good on the outside, hurting on the inside. So it's not about a look. Amen. Suicide hides. Yes. So I just want to encourage you today to uh, continue to make a difference. Help someone. Listen to someone. If you're on here listening today, we I love you. We love you. And, and get you some help. We can get help. If you don't know what else to do, call a suicide hotline. But I'm telling you, it's very near and it's in our communities, y'all. It's right, it's right under us. And you could be praising God and all that and miss it. Be sensitive. Ask the Holy Spirit to cause you to be discerning and cause you to help people. Amen. So number four is never give up. No matter how hard it gets. If you need help, don't be ashamed to ask for it. Amen. If you have suicidal thoughts, Get you some counseling called the suicide hotline. It's real. Ask God and people to help you because we're helpers one to another. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. James 4, 2 says, we're helpers. I'm sorry. James 4 and 2 says, you have not because you ask not. People are not mind readers. People are not so discerning. If you need help, this God will put, even if it's one person, he'll put one person in your life that you can go talk to and say, hey, let's get you some help. You can call the 1-800-SUICIDE-HOTLINE. Nobody has to know that you call. I'm telling you, it's help out here. But let me tell you something. God's not going to do everything for you. God uses people. God uses people. God uses people. We are his hands and his feet in the earth. Amen. Glory to God. And I didn't, I didn't know one of my members' son was going through this, that her, that he, the girl just committed suicide probably a day ago. Amen. 26 years young. We don't have to do that, y'all. Come on. God's got a better plan for us. He spared our lives for a reason. Don't be ashamed. Amen. And number five, and I'm going to close with number five. God bless you, Mom Dar. It's good to have you out last night. Amen. Number five is purpose to stay free. In 2023, purpose to stay free in 2023. That's a good word. I like that purpose. You have to purpose to stay free in 2023. You have to purpose that you're going to rid yourself of drama. You're going to, you know, if it means cutting some people loose, cut them loose. If it means backing up, backing up. If it means spending some time by yourself and getting yourself together, bringing yourself to a healthy place, love yourself enough to come to a healthy place. Prepare to stay purpose to stay free in 2023. John 8, 32 says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 36 says, if the son shall set you free, you will be free indeed. And as I told him last night, a lot of the things that we need to be free from is people bondage. Somebody put it, somebody type in people bondage. We, we, we are so concerned about what people will think. Even people that struggle with suicide or, or struggle with thoughts, or maybe you have a you're a public figure, you struggle with oh, what is this person going to think? Look, you got you ain't got time to worry about what people are going to think. You got to fight for your life. We all have to fight for our life. I have to fight for my life. You have to fight for your life because the enemy's always after our soul. He's always after our minds, our wills, our emotions, our intellect, our imagination. Amen. But we have to purpose that we are in 2023. I made it and I'm going to stay free. 
I'm going to stay free from people. I'm going to stay free from opinions. I want to stay free from things that will try to bind me. I'm going to be free from people. I wrote here, we've been through some rough stuff this, uh, this past year, but we're still here. We've been through some tough stuff, all of us. We've been through loss. We've lost loved ones, but we're still here. So I'm going to read these five things, five things to remember in 2023. And I'm going to pray over you and release you in Jesus name. Five things to remember in 2023. Number one, forget and forget and leave the past in the past. Forget and leave the past in the past. Scripture reference of Philippians 3, 13 and 14 and Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Number two, stay in expectation and faith. Stay in expectation and faith. I love Psalm 27, 13. Anybody that's close to me knows I love Psalm 27 and 13. When David said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. Don't stop believing God for his goodness in your life. Amen. And the second scripture reference for number two is 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Number three. Third thing to remember in 2023, number three, keep believing for God's best in every area of your life. Keep believing for God's best in every area of life, every area of your life. And the scripture reference is Mark 9, 23. Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes all things, glory to God. Number four, which is really good and important, never, ever give up. No matter how hard it gets, if you need help, don't be ashamed to ask for it. Whether it's dealing with suicide or dealing with whatever you may be going through, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be ashamed to ask for help. Ask God and people to help you. We're helpers to one another. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And James 4, 2 says, you have not because you ask not. It's just like if a person is hungry, if a person's hungry or they don't have no money, you have to ask somebody to help you and feed you because they don't know that you're hungry. Amen. It's no harm in asking. Amen. And number five, purpose to stay free in 2023. Purpose to stay free in 2023. The scripture reference is John 832 and John 836. If the sun shall set you free. You will be free and deep and free yourself from people, free yourself from opinions, free yourself from who don't like you. It doesn't even people. People are going to like you and not like you. People are going to talk about you. They're going to they're gonna talk about you if you keep a clean house <laughs> or they're talk about you if you keep, keep a dirty house. They're gonna, people are going to talk. That's what people do. But you have to get over people bondages. Amen. Cheryl Butler Draper says closed mouths don't get fed. That's a good word. And closed mouths don't get help. That's so good. Closed mouths don't get fed and closed mouths don't get help. I know we love those that committed suicide last year. We love them. But let me tell you something. They didn't open up their mouth and get the help that they needed. And I know the suicidal thoughts and tendencies is a sickness. But you, you got you to gotta go to somebody. There's, a, there's help out here. You don't have to take your own life. Amen. Uh, Sonia said, this is some real good 2023 New Year teaching. Thank you, Sonia. So that's it. I want to see you all progress this year. I want to see you do better this year. I don't want 2023 to look like the years of past. But even, the, let me tell you something, even the past three years, that uh, that's right, Kiki, the devil wants you to be silent. The devil hides when you're silent, amen? But let me tell you something, even the past three years we've been through, 2020, 2021, and 20, whatever we've been through, it made us stronger. Amen. You don't grow when things are going well. You grow under trial. You grow when the pressure is on. You grow under loss. Amen. Because when, you, when you're under pressure or you're going through a hard trial, those things keep you looking to the hills from whence cometh your help because your help comes from the Lord. When that heat is turned up, you, you run to God. God bless you, Liz. Uh, and Liz, God bless everybody. But I'm telling you, you have to know that when the pressure is on, the heat is on, it's going to have you run into prayer. It's going to have you run into church. It's going to have you run into God. 
The Bible says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I'm done. Let's give God praise. Amen. Mm. Listen, if you really enjoyed this New Year's message, share it, share it, share it. Press the share button right now so somebody on your page can listen to this word. Amen. There may be more things to remember for the year of 2023. I'm just giving you five things to remember 2023 so you can get off to a good start. And so I don't want in the next two or three weeks that you you looking like you were still in 2022. It's a new year. It's a new season. Look like it. Act like it. Talk like it. Begin to release your faith. Begin to say what you what you're believing God for in this new year of 2023. And know that you made it. There's a lot of people that didn't make it. Even people towards the end of the year, different celebrities we see that didn't make it into the new year. But you made it. That means God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for everyone that's on here. Father God, we thank you for every family that's represented here. And we thank you, Lord, that you've brought us into 2023 in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask that you allow us and strengthen us and help us to forget and leave the past in the past. We ask that you cause us to stay in expectation and faith. We say, Lord, keep us believing you for your best in every area of our life. Lord, we ask that you never, ever let us give up, no matter how hard it gets. If we need help, let us not be ashamed to ask for it. And Father God, we thank you that we purpose to stay free in 2023, Lord. We ask that you would show us uh, what we need to do, that you would give us ideas, that you would show us who to pull away from, who to pull forward to. Father God, that we could, that this year and our life would look different. It's insanity to think that you can continue to do the same thing and get different results. So Lord, whatever you lead us to do, help us to be led by your spirit. Help us to do what we need to do. Help us to walk where you want us to walk. Whatever doors we need to close, let us close it and bolt it and never open it again, Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us to look to the hills and which cometh our help because our help comes from you. And Father God, I pray that as we're on this line, that you would give these, my brothers and sisters, a blessed year of 2023. Even though there may be ups and downs and challenges, let us hold to your unchanging hand. No matter what we face in life, we know that we can face it if we stick with you. So Lord, bless your people today. Let them have a blessed day. Give them a blessed year of 2023 and cover them and keep them in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm done. Let's give God praise. That's right. New year, new season, new day. That's right. LBS more. There's hope in all of us. Amen. So I just encourage you today to just let God have his way in your life. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Amen. Sure, I appreciate you. Thank you for giving us such encouragement to start the new year. You're welcome. And I just want to see everybody live a good life, enjoy your life. And I want you to go mad this year. Go make a difference in someone else's life. Somebody needs you. Somebody needs to hear your story and somebody needs your strength. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you, my darts. I love you with the love of the Lord. Keep me in prayer that I can continue to deliver this word and bless people and I can make a difference all around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. No communion today. We'll have communion soon, Norman Bell. Amen. I love you all. Have a blessed day. Happy New Year 2023 and the best is yet to come. Have a blessed day, everybody. Love you all.